they've been seeing the take of Shilon and is causing her power creep go around a lot recently. And quite frankly, I disagree. My name is Juice and let's get into it. I'm gonna have to ask you to completely hear me out before drawing any conclusive thoughts. If you still disagree with me by the end of this, that's completely fine. I'm also gonna evaluate the two as supports. DPS Shilonen may only get a very brief mention. This is because I want to evaluate this debacle from a support perspective, as this is the main aspect that people have been focusing on. I'd like to start this video by saying that if both characters are C0R0, they are equal to each other, with Shilonen being a little better. If you give them each C0R1, aka their signature weapon, then yes, Shilonen is better, but it's not by some massively drastic margin. Their res Shred is pretty much equal, assuming that you've got 4 VV on Kazuha, with the Wind Lad having a bit more in fact, assuming that you've completely maxed out your cat skill. Damage bonus percent is wherever difference is rolling. If we assume that Kazuha has the correct amount of ER, then he will provide you roughly 30% damage bonus on average. It is possible to get 40% damage bonus on him with 1000 plus EM, but most people aren't getting that with proper ER. However, in fairness, there are some teams such as Nervalette teams which don't really need his burst anyway. So you can go all in on EM in such a case. Shilonen on 4P Cinder City is giving you a 40% damage bonus unconditionally. This is either 10% more or equal to Kazuha's buff. Give Shilonen her Sig, then she offers more damage bonus than him on the whole. Also, her single character healing offers a Farina synergy. Yes, it may not be teamwide healing, but if the healing is fast and large enough, then it will still work fine. In the same way that Bennett's healing is fine, for instance. Even better, dare I say, because Shilonen will be used earlier in the rotation most of the time. Their constellations are going to be useful for different teams. Kazuha's C2 will be based for teams like Vape Plakino and Lin Vape, whereas the Geocat provides a unique buff based on what elements you're playing. I'd say her HP% percent buff to Hydro is the most notable one. Shilonen can also buff a whole other element. They can both help out Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cryo, but because the cat is Geo, she can help out that element too. So when you pick them apart, you can see how their differences aren't actually all that large. Even so, I do think that Shilunen is better than him. With that being said, this does not spell the end for Kazuha. Dude, not by any means. For starters, they are more often than not going to either be replacements for each other, or they will work together. Think about the best team that's going to come out of her release. Nervalette, Farina, oh look at that, Kazuha, and Shilonen. Here, they both work together. The Wind Lad's role isn't being stripped from him by any means. Then take something like Vape Lakino. Dude, if you get Constellations, then Kazuha is literally better thanks to the EM buff. His burst becomes a whole lot more worth using in this team where you usually wouldn't. Otherwise, they are, once again, side grades to each other. For Linny, same thing. They are literally just side grades to each other. Another thing is diminishing returns. A ton of top meta teams such as Nervalette and Linny will make great use of Lady Farina, yes? You already have plenty of damage bonus percent. At some point, you're not gonna need any more of that. So it's not like the extra damage percent that Shilonen provides over Kazuha is going to be all that nuts in most teams. Another aspect of this is that the cat can buff teams that Kazuha can't. Cough, cough, Navia. Yes, geo application problems, I'll get to that, but let me finish my current point first. So if you're going to use that on one half, you know who you'll have on the other side? Kazuha. There are legit multiple top meta teams that use him to great effect. There's no way that Bro will suddenly become obsolete the second that Shilonen releases. For example, a Navia team on one half, a Lenny Vape team on the other. This is a very real scenario, and to me, this only proves that you'd ideally want to own both on your account for max value efficiency. To address the Navia Geo application situation, if you can get most of her shrapnels, perhaps only missing one to two, that's fine, because her last few shrapnel stacks provide damage bonus, which I don't know about you, but considering Farina, Shilonen, Nighttime Whispers, possibly even Verdict if you own it, yeah, you're not going to be short on damage bonus. The Geo Res Shred that Shilonen provides is going to be way more worth it than missing one to two crystal shrapnel stacks. This can also easily be solved by using Navia's burst later. Her first skill will always have max shrapnel stacks, 
So using her burst later means that you'll still have it up while gathering stacks for her second skill. This is nothing new. It's the same way how running Farina with Linny for front-loaded vapes is stronger than using a third pyro to completely max out his pyro passive. So I still believe that Shilonen will become Navia's new best in slot geo partner in crime. Back to the main point. I find it kind of hard to believe, unless you're deliberately going out of your way to get rid of Kazuha, that you'll never find a use case for him again. Even if we look at teams which aren't at the total top but still have merit, such as Chloriander teams, Kazuha is preferable for aggro because his burst applies electro through consistent swirls, which allows you to proc more official A4s, therefore increasing the team's overall DPS. If we look at an older team like International, Kazuha is still preferred because of his ability to double swirl comfortably, plus he can spread Hydra application out further. For the record, I'd like to reiterate that I do think that Shilonen is a better unit on the whole. She is S tier, but I heavily disagree with the notion that Kazuha is suddenly useless. If you pulled him in 5.0, you are still absolutely in the clear. This is for another particular reason. Look at the past! Answer me this. Did Farina coming out make Yolan completely and utterly useless, or did they end up working together beautifully to create an extremely strong team core, while also offering the option to run one on the other half of the abyss? Did Arlecchino coming out kick Linny out of S tier? No! A lot of casuals or console players might disagree with me, but Linny literally does almost as much damage as Arla. It's not like his DPS is significantly lower than her. The Nave is better because of her adaptability into many teams, which makes her excellent for all scenarios, whereas Linny is mostly single target. And that yes, her damage is a little higher than his. Even so, they're so damn close in numbers, and if you actually take the time to learn Linny, he's pretty damn good. His multi-wave is excellent too. His damage is also concentrated in a big nuke that you can get halfway through his rotations, allowing him to kill bosses faster with enough investment. For those who don't know, Linny isn't like Ganyu. He's a burst and skill nuker who does maybe two to three charge attacks per rotation. Throw constellations into the mix, then yeah. Farina and Arla will then kind of overwhelm their competition by quite a bit. But if you look at C0R1, they're still both well worth your time, especially in the Farina Yolan case, because those two are both supports, so they apply to this specific case some more. It's funny because when you throw cons into the mix, Kazuha is arguably better in some situations, mostly the popular vape teams. Though Shilonen being able to buff HP% at C2 is such a wild win, I'm not gonna undersell that either. Kazuha and Shilonen are gonna be the same. While yes, the shiny new character is going to be better, the old one is still going to cook just fine. I do want to take a moment to applaud them both. It's very impressive that the Geocat is rivaling one of Genshin Impact's strongest characters, that has been as much of a staple to the meta as bread and water are staples to us humans. She is absolutely no chump. Yet, we still have to give Kazula his flowers in this situation too. Or his Naku weeds, I feel like he'd prefer that. Anyways, this guy has been good for over three years. He came out in 1.6 and only now are we getting a character who is able to rival him. Even then, Hoyo made him so good that Bro is still going to be an important staple after Shilonen's attempted murder of a dude. He's literally him! You know who's really getting caught in the crossfire here? Kachina. I do still believe that this kid is gonna be good. She is still a fantastic budget option if you lack either of the two five-star units that have been the main point of discussion during this video. Four Piece Cinder City is truly a busted set. With that being said, I realistically can't see anybody using Kachina if they have both of the big buffing five stars. I suppose there is the use of supporting DPS Shilonen, which is pretty cool. This happened with Farina and Yolan as well. The following question only applies applies if you aren't biased against Yolan or Shing Choa's characters. Tell me honestly, in your day-to-day -day life as a Genshin player with all of Farina, Yolan, and Shing Cho, remember, honestly, assuming you have all three well-built, how often do you really use your Shing Cho? I'm not asking you to talk about new players or defensive utility or accessibility or anything like that. I'm asking for your honest answer. How often do you actually use Shing Cho and the Abyss after acquiring those two? And if your answer is yes, you still use him, are you a console player? Player. Then with Arlecchino and Linny, how often do you actually play other pyro DPSs if you have one of the two? Linny only applies if you're a PC player. You get the point. Kazuha is not going to be the one getting frauded upon the cat's release. Kachina is. 
at the end of the day, we're arguing cake versus ice cream here. Both are extremely good and are not to be underestimated. I think that if you already have the wind lad, no, Shilonen is far from a must. Kazulad will provide you with everything that you're looking for, even if the Geocat may perhaps be a better character on the whole. I do think that if you're a heavy meta player that really cares about account optimization, just get both. You're gonna want to have the two sooner or later, especially if we get more teams in the future where they work together, much like the Nervalette team core. It'd be cool to see these two become their own quote-unquote genre of double cores, if that makes sense at all. If you're a free-to-play who pulled for Kazuha and feels bad about it, or skipped him for Shilonen and feels bad about it, don't feel that way. Both choices are objectively good. You end up with a peak unit either way. Shilonen is better. The healing, ability to buff a whole additional element and potential to provide more damage bonus percent than Kazuha is all very much there. Yet the Wind Lad is far from being done with his time in S tier. The main takeaway that I want you to leave with after finishing this video is that no, Kazuha is not getting kicked out of S tier because of Shilonen's release. He is still S, even if Shilonen is a slightly higher S tier your unit than him. They are both well worth your time at the end of the day, especially if you're a Nervalette main. If you care about the Genshin Impact meta to any degree, or if you're somebody that wants to clear off your eyes closed to get the Abyss over with faster, then get them both. Hopefully this video was able to tell you why Shilonen isn't Kazuha power creep. This has been Juice, signing out, and I will perish on the hill of Kazuha's design being a lot better.